guys, I'm Greg. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Today's beer is Tommy Knocker's Brewery. This is their Hop Strike Black India Pale Ale IPA. It says on the label, heavy on hops and balanced with a dark rye malt. Coming in at 6.5% ABV. The IBUs on this one is 78. Uh, they're out of Idaho Springs, Colorado, guys. Uh, is a year-round serving on this beer from them, so if you can get their beers, you should be able to get this one year-round. The uh, glassware, uh, the food pairings, it has none listed here because uh, American Black IPA is not technically a style yet. Fairly new uh, style of beer, but it will be added. I feel pretty comfortable that it will, and it would go with the same pairings as your regular IPAs and your Imperial IPAs, even though it has a little more roasted chocolatey type malt in it, it will even go with some even stronger dishes to go along with that. So, uh, glass bread day, you could use a pint, a becker, a stein, a mug. Uh, this is right at 6.5% ABV, and I usually reserve the Dubell glass for the 7 and up, but on the darker beer, sometimes I like to pour them in the, uh, the Dubell glass, because some of them can be, uh, on the black eye piece, that can be really dark, so I, I like to have those in there to, to see the light, see if there's any light coming through there. Uh, I guess that's everything we need. The uh, the malt they use is Idaho, Idaho Pale Malt. Uh, they use a European Crystal, a chocolate malt, and a chocolate rye malt to go with this. The hops are Chinook, Newport, Glacier, Nugget, and Summit. And it is dry hopped. So, uh, let's get your cap off this one, guys, and see what this one's about. Uh, the first time I did Tommy Like a Beer, I really wasn't impressed with them too much. And the last one I did, uh, I... I kind of put them to the side and didn't, wasn't interested in buying anymore. Then I bought a couple more. They changed the labels and stuff up. And uh, we're going to give them a second try and see what to, see if they've uh, improved any. I enjoyed the last one that I had from them. It was uh, it was pretty decent. So uh, that being said, hopefully this one will be too. Over into the light. Uh, it is very very dark. I'm not giving any light around it, so it is as black as use motor oil. Uh, didn't pour a tremendous head. We did give us about a finger, half a finger ahead or so there. And it looks pretty good. I mean, nice tight bubbles in there. And I can see them streaming up from the bottom to the bottom of the head there. So, let's get a nose on it, guys. Well, it smells really, really good. Some, I got some chocolate in there. A lot of roasted malt, even some grapefruit too. Wow, very, very nice. Citrusy too. Wow, got a very, very nice chocolatey smell. Cheers, guys. A lot of bitterness. 78, I think I told you, no, I've got 95 IBUs here, but the bottle says 78 on here. So Beer Advocate is reporting 95 IBUs. Either them or Rape Beer was. That's what I have written down here at 95, and it's not that. It tastes like 95, though. It does have a bitter. Maybe the, the chocolate almost is like a, it's not like a sweet chocolate, it's like a semi-sweet chocolate or even a bitter chocolate. A lot of taste there, though. I can taste the rye. If you want some taste, this one's this got a little bit. It's not bland at all. I like it. It's very nice. Being a hop head, I like the bitter, some of the bitter beers. As long as we got the malt to match the bitterness. I just don't want bitter to be bitter, but... That's pretty tasty. 
This might be another winner, guys. Uh, kind of changing my mind on the Tommy Knocker beer, so uh, we'll see how this one goes. And we'll let it warm up. It's 40 degrees behind the fridge, and see where we end up on this one, guys. Stick around. See if anything else that helps. Hey, guys, thanks for sticking around. Got a little bit left here in the glass. I think I'm being just a tad on the bitter side. I thought it was excellent. It's got a very nice roasty, roasty, roasty chocolate, citrusy. I mean, nice hot presence, night malt, nice malt presence. So, uh, very enjoyable. Final chug, guys. Very impressive. I right here on the corner of the bottle too. Best Buy. It's got the date here when they want you to have it by. This one is actually January 23rd, 12. So we just squeaked this one in. So Anytime we can get the date on the bottle, especially an IPA, it's a win-win situation. Win for them because they know we're drinking fresh beer and it's win for us because we know we're not buying stale beer or old beer. So Especially in the IPA and even in the South. So I want to know what year it's made. It's irrelevant. You know, if I want to drink this now or if I want to drink it Three, four, five, ten years from now, depending on what the AVV is. I'd like to know. I just want to know. <laughs> need to know that information. I keep saying, you wouldn't buy a loaf of bread or a gallon of milk if it didn't have a date on it. So, damn it, put it on the bottles. I'm tired of telling y'all that. <laughs> you reckon they hear me? I seriously doubt it. Uh, I'm going to give this an eight. Uh, it's an A minus. It's a definitely an A beer as far as I'm concerned. Uh, very impressed from what I had last year on the Tommy Knocker. So I've had a couple of good ones here, and I believe I got one more, and I might even jerk it out and do it tomorrow. So we'll get the Tommy Knockers out of here because I'm not sure what the date is on it, too. So I don't want to run these beers past, but it's an Imperial Nut Brown, I believe. So uh, I don't think it's going to go bad. It, I think it's like 9% or something. So uh, I enjoyed this one, guys. If you had this one, give me some comments back. It looks like they changed the labels up on them now. I've got a, a nice. Uh, a nice little elf uh, or whatever it is, what it's supposed to be. Let's uh, see what they're calling it. Tommy Knocker, let's see. Tommy Knocker legend. Tommy Knocker slipped into mining camps of Idaho Springs, 1800s, with a discovery of gold in their mountains and streams. These mischievous elves, who hardly ever seen, were often heard singing and working. They guided many fortunate miners from harm's way to the gold they sought. So. Cool deal there, guys. Uh, give me some comments back on this, guys. As always, rate, comment, subscribe. Come on back tomorrow. We're going to look in the fridge. See you then.